Hello, my name's Julie Van Onselen. I'm Managing Director of Dermatology Education Partnership Limited. We are a small specialist agency and we understand and know the dermatology world. Today, I'm going to talk to you and give you a brief overview of continuing education development for UK healthcare professionals. So, I am hoping by the end of this presentation, you will have an overview of the current CPD requirements for UK healthcare professionals, an outline of the place for accreditation in healthcare education, and I'm hoping you will debate about CPD, why is it important, and also what it is and what it isn't. So let's start with a few definitions from the three Royal Colleges. So let's look at the General Medical Council, um, first of all, and the councils, um, which, as I say, link with the colleges. You'll see that the definitions actually have quite a lot of similarities. So for doctors, and this is for all doctors, um, CPD is, out, is learning outside of undergraduate and postgraduate training, and it's all about maintaining and improving standards in practice. It's covering development of, of knowledge, skills, and attitudes, and it includes formal and informal learning activities. Nursing, um, CPD has been defined by the Nursing and Midwifery Council as professional knowledge and skills updating with a continual process of learning and reflecting on practice. This can also be achieved through a variety of means. So I think a theme's coming out here that's not just about attending the study day. The General Pharmaceutical Council, um, for their pharmacists, they see CPD as a process of continuing learning and development throughout the life of the professional. It enables pharmacists and pharmacy technicians to develop their role and understand that they are competent in their area of practice. It is not just about participation in continuing education, but it's an ongoing process of reflecting, planning, action, evaluation. And in education, this is actually known as the reflective cycle. So why is CPD so important? Well, it's important because it is a continu continuous process and it is all about updating clinical and professional knowledge. This knowledge in turn should reflect in clinical care and the changing needs of the patient and also the service and also the way that healthcare professionals work together as teams. CPD is essential to ensure healthcare professionals are fit to practice and maintain professional standards. That's why CPD is completely tied in with appraisal and revalidation. And CPD can actually help support specific changes in practice and it can enhance work satisfaction and career progression. So, in summary, CPD keeps healthcare professionals up to date and competent and CPT activities should maintain and improve quality of patient care and standards in clinical teams and services. So let's explain a little bit more about how CPD fits in with registration and revalidation um, because it's really important that they're all linked together. So revalidation requires healthcare professionals to demonstrate continuing fitness to practice on a regular basis. Now it's quite a process. Um, for doctors every five years, nurses every three years, the pharmacists have not yet stated a, a set um, pro, um, sort of year process, but they say it should be built, continually built into the CPD framework. But uh, for instance, um, nurses, revalidation is still quite new, so there's still a bit of confusion. There are still some nurses to revalidate. The process started two years ago. If nurses don't revalidate, um, and this is all new in terms of um, putting to, take, taking to the NMC their um, continual professional development file and folder, which is verified, and we'll have more of that in the next slide, they will literally not be on the register anymore. So they have to pay a registration fee every year, but every three years they have to revalidate. So 
unfortunately, um, a lot of nurses are, are currently being lost to the profession because of fear of revalidation, and this is something the Royal College of Nursing has been actually publicising recently. But revalidation is really good, and it, people shouldn't be frightened of it, because if you're continuing your professional development, you're, you're ready for your revalidation. It gives extra reassurance to patients, the publics, and, and the councils. And as I say, it's linked with appraisal. So it's really important for people's managers to include CPD with the appraisal cycle as well. And that should be every year. So people should be ready every five years, every three years, or as pharmacists, it's a continual process. So just to go through doctors, nurses, pharmacists very briefly. Um, so basically doctors every five years, CPD is, should always be presented at the yearly appraisal and learning should be discussed and any evidence of learning reflective is collated in a personal development plan. And this should be managed on an ongoing basis. So it's not just that you come to your yearly appraisal, you think the night before, I better reflect on what I've done in the year. It's something that as a um, healthcare professional, you build in to being an ongoing. There should be a balance of learning with a significant proportion outside the normal workplace. So you can't just do all your learning where you work. You've got to go outside the box as well. Now, I think this last point is really important because there is so much confusion. There is no requirement to collect a set number of credits or points every year. It's very much about what you do. Um, there's there's a, you know, a lot of um, events are related to CPD points, but actually the, the GMC Council said there's no set credits, although you will see the RCGP suggesting 50 a year. And a credit is simply equated to an hour of CPD. Nurses, 35 hours every three years. There's an interesting divide here. 20 hours should be participatory learning with other healthcare professionals. Um, so this may be in a, in a study day or conference environment, but other hours may be individual, so online, even supervised practice. And again, I won't go through this, but it's very, very similar. It's bound with the yearly appraisal, the reflection, and then the submission at the end of three years after a meeting with a verifier that you submit literally your electronic file to the NEC and then you can be re-registered. Pharmacists have to do a minimum of nine CPD entries a year. Again, they can be a whole variety of CPD events, but they have to record and reflect on nine events a year, which then bounds in with their appraisal. And then this means they are continually revalidated and they submit this to the General Pharmaceutical Council dedicated CPD website before their CPD records are always reviewed by a CPD reviewer appointed by the General Pharmaceutical Council and when they've reviewed the records they're able to continue um, in practice. So and I just want to talk about accreditation because accreditation is slightly different to CPD but runs alongside it. So any UK um, educational and CP activities can be accredited so they can be accredited by Royal Colleges or professional healthcare professional societies. Um, so the Royal College of Nursing, the RCGP, uh, Royal College of Medicine, or in dermatology, um, societies would be the British Dermatology Nursing Group. Even some patient groups um, can give a kite mark. Um, but, and there are also online lots of generic CPD certification accreditation suppliers. Now I think there's quite a difference. I think the key thing is, remember accreditation is a kite mark. So basically, some of the CPD providers, they're providing CPD review for a whole variety of training courses outside medicine, outside health. And they're really looking that those activities have an educational component, whereas the Royal College will peer review within the clinical area as well as the educational component. So the key thing is you don't need to add these points to what you're doing, but a kite mark from a Royal College, I personally would, that's what I would recommend and that's what I do for my courses. So it, as you can see, um, you know, you, it means education activities be assessed and peer reviewed. And as I say, you don't need this accreditation for allocating CPD hours because you can say this is a study day and it would equate to six CPD hours. Remember the APPI Code of Conduct, just briefly to remind you, 
uh, what the ABPI say about providing educational services and training and um, there's the statement there which I'm sure you're well aware of. So just to summarise, first of all CPD for UK healthcare professionals, what it is not. It's not about only attending educational events, it's not separate from clinical practice, it's not separate from revalidation, it's not about collecting points and credits and it's not voluntary, it's mandatory to stay on your register and stay in clinical practice. CPD for UK healthcare professionals, what it is. Healthcare professionals have a responsibility for their own learning and CPD records. That it should be appropriate to personal fields of practice. P healthcare professionals should identify future changes in practice and the needs of the service where they work and match the CPD to that. And CPD activities can be varied. It's not just about conferences and study days, although they are very important as well. And reflecting on learning is absolutely key. And this is, again, what we do in our courses. We, have, uh, we talk a lot about reflection. We have action planning at the end. And we say, now you've been on this study day, what are you going to take? What are you going to put into practice? I ask people to identify three very practical um, clinical changes they're going to make, and then ask them to reflect on that with patient case studies, which they can put for their revalidation. And you also identify your further learning needs. Now I've done this uh, CPD, what do I need to do as a result of it to actually continually improve my practice? And it's mandatory for revalidation and continued registration for all healthcare professionals. Here is a list of resources and you can go and there's, this is very much an overview. So if you want the actual finer detail for CPD for doctors, nurses and pharmacists in the UK, please visit any of these websites and you can find out all the details of what you need to know. My name is Julie Van Onselen. I'm Managing Director of Dermatology Education Partnership. I'd like to thank you all very much for listening to this presentation and I do hope it's been helpful.